Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great thirsty Thursday. It's been busy already out here getting all the grill stuff together. I've taken a little break. Uh, it's actually chilly outside today. It's uh, about 40 degrees and gusty winds, so the wind chills are in like the low 30s and things. And then for Saturday, <clears throat> there's going to be a winter storm on the East Coast, but it's going to be out of here before Sunday. Um, all we're looking at here, basically 95 is the demarcation point uh, for typically most winter storms because you get all of the warm air off of the ocean, which kind of makes a rain snow line that usually starts at <coughs> interstate. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me interstate 95 and then it progressively gets more and more snow as you go out this one will be a lot of snow probably up in uh the mountains and so forth but it's going to be mainly just rain we're going to get an inch of rain on saturday but by sunday morning no rain and it's actually going to be about 47 degrees and light winds uh five to ten miles an hour so it's actually going to be nice weather for the game and i can't wait to see the cowboys hopefully win the nfc east and if the cowboys win the nfc east Dak Prescott will be the first quarterback to get four division titles since Troy Aikman, something that Tony Romo didn't even do. Uh, I'm serious. Um, that's getting up there. He's beginning to make a lot of different records and things that you have to start, you know, looking at this. And the only thing that's missing from Dak Prescott's resume is, is getting a Super Bowl, and I hope that he gets that one. Uh, it's been too long. I'm tired of hearing uh, the Cowboys can't win the big one. But, you know, <laughs> I feel like with the Cowboys, it's like um, a few good men. You don't. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. The truth is the Dallas Cowboys are the driver of everything in football. And Ryan Clark literally spilled the beans on it. Exactly that. You, I don't know if you've noticed it because, see, what they do, unfortunately, I, I, I'm not mad at anybody ever figuring out ways to make money and to be successful. The problem with it is, is the way they go about it, it ends up basically trashing and leaving people in your wake. Uh, fortunately, Dak Prescott's got a degree in psychology, okay, a doctorate in psychology, because you need one to be the head, uh, to be the quarterback of the Cowboys with all of the trash that they talk. They literally will come up with matrix for Dak Prescott and why he's not good, even though he still continues to win and have great numbers and everything else, that he's not good. Even this year, uh, where he leads the NFL in touchdown passes. And if he ends up finishing the season with the most touchdown passes, no quarterback in the history of the Dallas Cowboys, not Roger, not Danny White, not Romo, not Troy Aikman, has led the NFL in touchdown passes. He can check off another one off the box. Be that as it may, they always come up with dacisms that they never use on anybody else. Remember when Dinkin and Duncan? Oh, yeah, they're, they're 13 and 3, but he's just Dinkin and Duncan. You know, he, he can't get the ball down the field. Just Dinkin and Duncan. Then he starts throwing down the field. Oh, well, they're just empty calories. They don't count. You know, and, and to literally have Shady McCoy go through and say something like, um, Dak Prescott has a great game, no turnovers. He then turns around and says, well, I want to see what he's like when he's had adversity and, you know, that, and turns the ball over and how he reacts. Well, that was actually last year. And when they he played, they were the highest scoring offense in football. But I want you to listen because this was on um, – Ryan Clark talking about how the Cowboys move the needle. Let me push, push. Uh, actually, let's do this one. Push. Put a bigger one up there. Let's listen to it. Dallas Cowboys are great. Everyone speaks highly of them, maybe outside of Stephen A. And for him, it's just a stick. 
Yeah, right? It's just a it's stick. His thing. Jerry Jones loves Stephen A. Stephen A. loves Jerry Jones. He loves the Dallas Cowboys. If without the Dallas Cowboys, first take would not be a watchable show during the football season. Nobody wants them to lose. It's just that when they do lose, you got to talk about it too. That fish is out of the bowl. Yeah, like you, and I think the saying is when you're wrong about someone or someone does something good, right? <laughs> let the applause be as loud as the booze. On the opposite side of that, you can't love the applause because if you love the applause, then you'll fall with the booze, right? If you allow the, the claps, right? If you allow the positive hmm. to boost you up, the, the Dallas Cowboys are... There you have it. For Stephen A. Smith, it's just a stick. It really is. And if you, you know, this is where I always say, like, it seems like when you are a former Dallas Cow, because check this out, because this is, seems like what always happens. When you are a former Dallas Cowboy, you end up being the biggest hater out there. And I think that's by design. Because the problem is, is I think it's almost like joining a gang. You have to be beat in. Or let's say you are the coach and your son is on the team. You can't show favoritism to your son. You've got to be harder on him than everybody else. And so that's where when you become, you know, uh, one of the talking heads and you're a former cowboy, you can't show that I'm a fan of the team. You, you end up being harder on them than anybody else. And people understand that it, like he says, it moves the needle. First take would be unwatchable if it wasn't for the Cowboys or all these shows. And you'll notice how every single day there's always at least one. Sometimes I'm watching, you know, uh, uh, Undisputed, and you'll see three or four segments on the Dallas Cowboys, knowing that there's 32 other teams. And you would think that there's no drama with any other teams other than the Cowboys. And so, you know, you might not like the Cowboys, but damn it, they're the ones that are making money for all of these mother humpers. And that's just a fact. And I guess it's part of life and so on that we just have to understand as Cowboy fans, you're never going to get a fair shake. You're never going to be given, you know, um, a pass when something happens and when you're the quarterback of the cowboys well you know you get more endorsement offers than anybody else if you're good but you will get trashed on a regular and you are held to a totally different standard than anybody else and i guess that's just the way it is but it's interesting to hear one of them admit exactly what they're doing hmm. yeah I guess that's what happens when you're America's team. Um, I'll add to this how it's crazy that the battle cry against the Dallas Cowboys, why they were frauds, was they lost to the Cardinals. They lost to the Cardinals and all that. We can't forgive them because they lost to the Cardinals. But then us beating the Rams earlier part of the season, oh, well, the Rams weren't a good team back then. There's so much time that has passed that the Rams are not the same team. Well, I can look at it and say the Cowboys aren't the same team that lost to the Cardinals either. Hmm. But after the Eagles lost to the Cardinals, that all went away. It's almost like poetic justice. All right, you good people. I got to go up here and put together this grill and get it seasoned up for this weekend. I can't wait. Tomorrow I'll be going to Restaurant Depot to get the chicken wings. Actually, no, I'll get those Saturday. Um, but I got my pulled pork butts, my butts to be pulled. Pause. And uh, we'll be smoking meats tomorrow. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you. Peace.